Hello, and welcome to the lore of Braunhaven. Uh, we're going to be continuing our exploration of the Merchant District of the Imperial Port. And today we're going to be looking at the largest tavern in the Merchant District, uh, in the Grand Mall of the Merchant District. And that is the Singing Mango and Pig Tavern. So the Singing Mango and Pig is a two-story affair. Um, the bottom floor is mostly a cellar that opens up directly onto the uh, Great River. And uh, in the days of old, they would receive uh, various sundries would be delivered via their private dock. Um, today, much the same uh, pretty much happens, although the, the basement area of the mango and pig is usually um, going to be used uh, not only for uh, food and whatnot, but Pirates and bandits will sometimes store um, ill-gotten gains, uh, stolen larcenous pursuits in the basement of the Singing Mango and Pig. Now, as a tavern, they, they don't have rooms for rent. They are not an inn, um, but it is but known throughout the Merchant District uh, by the locals as the best place for uh, smoked pork, uh, mostly boar, and uh, they do have a number of gambling games that spring up. Not that they are official games, they just spring up uh, locals playing things such as pirate's dice and, uh, and cards. Uh, those seem to spring up with regularity throughout the tavern. Now the owner of the tavern is a man known as Captain Thaddeus. And Thaddeus was actually a pirate king at one point. Uh, out on the island of Smuggler's Cove. And one thing led to another, um, you know, a, a number of um, arguments and, and backstabbings and internal pirate politics led to Thaddeus being deposed. And uh, today, uh, several years later, he is here making his living uh, smoking uh, boar or the locals of the Imperial Port. <clears throat> He's pretty gruff, spends most of his day drinking and uh, and humming to him, sea shanties to himself as he smokes his pork in the back room. Uh, but he would be very interested in uh, getting the assistance of those with the adventurous bent, um, possibly of regaining his foothold on uh, Smuggler's Cove. And as to what that really might entail, uh, well, you would have to talk to him. Um, but uh, there obviously would be a number of different ways of going about it. Now, the next location, uh, near, very near to the Singing Mango and Pig, is Belatar's Emporium Magica. Belatar is an interesting individual in that uh, he's, he is a very rare oddity among um, his kind. And his kind is that Belatar is actually a mind lasher. <clears throat> or uh, for people that are uh, familiar with Dungeons and Dragons, uh, a mind flare. Um, he, is, um, he is of neutral alignment <clears throat> and... Uh, he is one of the, he, he, not only is he rare because he exists among uh, humans in the Imperial Port, but, um, well, and that he doesn't just go about eating their brains, but he's also rare because he actually studies magic. <clears throat> and this is a forbidden trait among the uh, Mind Flayers. Um, they have a, or, or, or Mind Lashers, they have a very, um, almost religious fervor towards psionics <clears throat> and um the real reality is that uh it uh, psionics and magic are really uh, two sides of a similar coin uh but uh it is it is a a big no in mind lasher society <clears throat> to study magic and so he was kind of exiled uh out of his colony to the underworld uh, and he has made his way up to the the service world here at the Imperial Port and has opened his Emporium Magica. Now, 
the Emporium Magica, uh, they have a, a ton of different items. Um, mostly, you're going to find, for the most part, useless trinkets, um, things of that nature. Uh, but you will find in here that there are a few rare gems. Um, you're going to find the occasional scroll and the occasional wand or um, a lot of times you'll find more common, uh, you know, parlor trick type magic items. For instance, like the the uh, the cloak of dramatic entry, which will billow menacingly and cause the sound of a of a th thunder strike far off in the distance any time the wearer crosses the threshold of a new room. Um, things of that nature. There, there are numerous items tucked into every small nook and cranny of the uh, ground floor of the shop. <clears throat> And uh, Bellatar is well known that uh, he, the people in the area actually trust him. Uh, he doesn't, uh, like I said, he doesn't run around eating brains. And so um, he is known that he will only consume uh, slaves that he has is, he is, uh, rightfully purchased. And he does have a particular taste for Swerf Neblin. And uh, he will usually be willing to offer a discount to any customers that come in that offer him a uh, Swerf Neblin because that's his favorite food. <clears throat> now, in the ground floor of the shop, there is a stairwell towards the back <clears throat> of the shop. Uh, and there is a, a red velvet rope that goes across it. And there is a sign written in, in Handelm, which is common, uh, that states... Uh, employees only. Nobody else is to go down the stairs. Nobody really knows what's down the stairs, um, other than, of course, Bellatar. And he he has been seen to go up and down those stairs quite frequently. Uh, for those that are wanting to purchase from Bellatars, uh, there is a uh, one or a one hundred uh, or D one hundred chart for purchasing from the Emporium um, that. There are just a number of different items, things such as bagpipes of bubbling or or panpipes of dancing. Um, <laughs> there are cursed flannel pajamas that cause flatulence. There's all sorts of items that can be found in Bellatars. So that is our uh, show for today. And uh, if you catch us on Thursday, we will be discussing the Greenwater Mercantile and Adventuring Company in the uh, Merchant District. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you next time.